In this video, I'll share 10 tips for painting prickly animals like this lovely hedgehog. Let's get started. I know, I know, I know. There's a lot of spikes there, isn't there? A lot of really sharp little points to, to kind of draw out. You don't have to draw them all exactly as you see them. So don't be tempted to do that. I think it'd just be too much and too complicated. So ease off that. What's well, just you do, just draw out the main ones and then you can fill the gaps in just freehand, okay? Just do it that way around. Now you find there's also a leg. Just have a quick look at that now. I'm not going to paint that leg, you know. What? It's going to fall over, I know. But I'm not going to paint that leg because of the fact that you can't really see it that well because it's quite blurry, isn't it? And sometimes things like this, which look perfectly fine whilst blurry in a photo, look really odd and indeed out of place when we include them in a painting. So the first thing I'm going to do is go around the very edges of my sized or brush. Look at that shape as well. It's not round, is it? It's not a round area. So I'm going to add that in there, like so. So far, so good. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to bring that down to here using the very tip of the brush. You have to stress the word very there, don't you? And then just along the side there. And we can blend this, we can move it around, we can do whatever we want with it. It's our little eye at the end of the day. Actually, no, it's not. It's a hedgehog's little eye, it's a spike's eye. That's going to go over there. Look at the shape of this highlight as well. So I'm going to draw around that. It kind of ducks down here like a little kind of end, well, like a little, I don't know, little cut really, isn't it? Just in there. And then you've got a line going across the top. And I reckon <laughs> that could be a shed roof or something, couldn't it? Or a bush. It's very straight, isn't it, in there? So it's a reflection or something. Always look deep into those reflections. You'll be amazed what you see sometimes. I'm going to tap just a few little marks around the bottom there. There's this area here. So again, just a hint of a highlight, just catching it. Putting that one just there. Then you got the uh, the pumpkin which is around here. And you just about make out that, can't you? There's a pumpkin. It is really a pumpkin, actually. It's just been eating one. Now, this is where you've got to be a little more careful because, yeah, you don't want to cover all that colour up, do you? Underneath all them details. It's not too detailed yet underneath there. We'll get the detail over the top of this. So my brush is nearly dry now. I do find that with watercolour white, is that what I'm using it? It dries really quickly on the brush itself, so just bear that in mind. Let's get a little bit more off camera than that. Just carefully add in this white in. Not too much. Now you know we had that lamp black and the lizard in crimson earlier, don't you? Let's have some more of that. Which we use for the eye, but I want it watery, so I'm just going to water down just the very top edge there. Look, we add a little bit in here, just using the side of the brush very quickly. Wash that brush out, come back in again, then blend that away with a damp, clean brush. Just blend it, just darken that area slightly, as you can see, then blend it away with some clean, clean water. And again, this will dry that little bit lighter. I just want it to slightly darker in that area around there. Just pull a few through into the background. Now, you won't be able to see them that well because of the background colour anyway. But because we're going to be pulling paint off and putting white over the top in places and tinting that white down, we're going to make them stand out. And all these fine hairs we can see on that reference photograph will look quite good when they're done. Okay. Okay, and reload. I'm going to tap that this time. It's just not too much on the brush. I'm just going to bring my hand around. 
and flick out just a few more of the dark hairs. Remember, not all the way down though. They're roughly about here. Look at the angle they go as well, more towards sort of the two o'clock direction, don't they? You know. So I'm going to pop those on there. And overlapping the lines as well. I'm looking at the direction. I'm looking at the curls. So some of these are a little bit curly like that. And it gets darker as it comes underneath the nose as well, doesn't it? A little bit darker down there. Slightly different angles in places. Constantly overlapping all the time. And a few more around there. But I think you got the general gist of this, haven't you? You've got the idea on what to do. Okay, time to make a start on the spikes. I know there's loads of them, isn't there? There really is a lot of spikes there. But let's try and work this in a methodical way. Okay, let's try and work out how we're going to do this. What we're going to do, I'm going to show you on here, look, by just drawing just one spike. Okay, I'm going to do it oversized on purpose. So let's just do it really dark so you can see what I'm doing. Look. So there's one very large oversized spike. Okay, what we can do, we can wet the spike like this. So I'm going to wet that one down. Now, while it's wet, grab some of your triple mix. So the raw sienna, alizarin crimson, and the burnt sombra, of course. And then you can add that in to that spike. Okay, bring that one down. If I just fade that out a little bit towards the top there, then you've got the white of the spike, haven't you? That's what I mean there. Now, if we get a little bit of the dark colour, the blacky red, we can then add this in to the base of this spike. Now this base is going to blend into the darkness behind it, isn't it? So think about that that way around. So that can blend into the base like that, just like that. And we'll bring a few lines into that damp paper along the side there. And give a little bit more of that. Then blend that together. A little bit in there. And that will give us shape that we need. You know, so we need that shape to be able to form the spike. There you go. <laughs> It's that straightforward, honestly. That's what you got to do with all of the spikes. This is where as well, if you wanted to, you can just lift off a little bit of paint, clean damp brush, get your clean tissue paper, clean kitchen roll, anything like that, and take off a little bit of paint in places, just to lighten small areas. So, see this gap here, look. If I just put a bit of an area there, just something, just a hint of something behind the scenes, something kind of in those depths in there, you know. And that's all I want to do with that. A little bit more there, maybe. And this is a little bit barren in there, isn't it? So I'm just going to add another section there. Okay, and that's the one I just pulled off, as you can see. But it just adds to it, doesn't it, by doing that. Something like that there should do. Nice point on the brush. And away we go. Right. Now, I want to see the angle. So I want to get my hand in the right, ang the right angle here. So if I just start to pull up some of those lines, just to branch across these spikes here, and I'm following the lines, I'm following the directions and coming down and coming along. See what I mean? So I'm just dragging them up. Fairly confident marks I'm trying to use. I, I don't want to just take my time and... If you take your time and just do it like that, then you might find your lines have got a little bit wiggly when you do that. You've got to have confident strikes. Which is why you want to test it out on some scrap watercolour paper, first of all, if you're not sure. So it's a bit like when we paint whiskers, really. You know, you've got to have confident, fluid strokes. So test it out, as I say, before you do this. Just make sure you know where you're going with it. If you would like to know how I painted the background on this painting, head to the video to the top right. I'll see you there.